All right, so here's another example of related rates. And let's read the problem and get started. A hot air balloon is rising straight up from a level field is tracked by a range finder 150 meters from the liftoff point. So you can see this in the picture. You see the balloon is going straight up. That distance is measured by Y. And the range finder is 150 meters from where the balloon lifted off at. Okay, now at the moment, the range finder's elevation is pi over 4. So they're giving us a particular value for pi over 4. Now, remember, this balloon is going up. So as the balloon goes up, the range finder is following the balloon. So this angle of elevation is actually changing. So we're not going to plug in pi over 4 for the theta because we're interested in its changing over time. So if we plug it in, we lose that information. So leave theta as theta, and we just make a note on the side of the particular moment that we're interested in involves theta being pi over 4. All right, so the angle, sorry is increasing at the rate of 0.14 radians per minute. Hmm. Increasing should be something you understand now after a couple examples. Increasing is referring to a rate of change. So ROC can stand for rate of change. And rate of change is just talking about the derivative over time. The derivative of what? Well, the angle is increasing. So this is the derivative of theta over time is given to us as 0.14. In this case, they also use the rate, also works, uh, to know that that's a derivative. And you can also use the units to determine what you're talking about. So radians is your theta, minutes means time, so d theta dt, d theta dt. Question, how fast, remember how fast is talking about a derivative, how fast is the balloon rising at that moment? Okay, so derivative of who? Derivative rising. Look at your picture. Which variable is describing the rising of the balloon? Well, that would be your height, y. So we're interested in the how fast the y is changing. When you talk about how fast, we're talking about with respect to time. This is what we're trying to find. All right, so they're giving us information about theta, and they're asking us about y. So we're given info on theta asked about y. So we need to somehow relate these two to each other. How are we going to do that? Relate theta and y. So look at your picture. How can we come take the height y and the angle theta and build an equation that relates the two? I'm actually going to ask you to pause the video and think about this for a minute. How can you relate the height y to the angle theta? There is a tool out there that will do that. So pause the video, take a few minutes, try and figure it out. Okay, hopefully you've taken a minute. Anytime you have an angle you want to relate to a dimension of the triangle that the angle is inscribed in, you're talking about trig. So we need a trig equation. What trig equations relate the angle to the outside dimensions of the triangle? We're talking about everybody's favorite, SOHCAHTOA. In this case, if this is our angle, we're talking about the opposite side we want to relate it to. So for opposite, we can use sine opposite hypotenuse, or we can use tangent opposite adjacent. So the hypotenuse is this side here. Do we know anything about the hypotenuse? Nothing at all. We have no clue what that is. On the other hand, on the bottom here, we have the adjacent. The adjacent is actually a fixed value. We know that the adjacent side is 150 meters. So in this case, we know the, so we're looking for the opposite, y. We know something about the adjacent, and tangent relates the two. Sine requires the hypotenuse, which we don't know anything about, so that would not be the right one to use in this case. So TOA is the one we're going to use. How does that work? Tangent of your angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. Well, we know that the adjacent is a fixed value. It's not changing, so we can plug that in to the bottom, 150 meters. And the opposite is what we're talking about, the y. 
there's your relationship between y and theta. Once you have your equation relating the two, now you have to find <clears throat> the equation for the related rates. What relates the two rates to each other? So how do we get that? How do we get dy dt and d theta dt into this problem? The answer is take the derivative. So take the derivative with respect to t on both sides. On the left-hand side, you have a tangent function. What's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared. Whoops. Secant squared, however, is not the end of the story. That's just the beginning because you need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of theta with respect to t? d theta dt. So be careful with your implicit here. You have to make sure each of your variables, when you take the derivative with respect to t, you write d theta dt, or in this other case, dy dt. But how do we do the right-hand side? Some of you might be thinking quotient rule, but before you do quotient rule, think about algebra. This guy here is just 1 over 150 times the y. So the 1 over 150 just chills out because he's a constant multiple. And you take the derivative of y with respect to t. This is the equation that relates the rates to each other. We are looking for dy dt. That's what we want to solve for. And they've given us information about theta. We're right here, pi over 4. And d theta dt, they told us was 0.14. Plug it in. Solve for what you're looking for, and you're done. So <clears throat> secant squared of our theta, so pi over 4, times our d theta dt, the rate of change is 0.14, equals 1 over 150 dy dt. Now, to get dy dt by itself, we need to multiply by the 150. So I'm going to bring him around, put him on the other side. And that's it. Plug that in your calculator. See what we get. So dy dt equals, <clears throat> now remember, secant is 1 over cosine. So cosine of pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2 over 2, or 1 over the square root of 2. If we flip that over, <clears throat> then we get square root of 2. Then we square it. Some of you might already know how to do this, but... Uh, this is just in case you need an exact answer. So square both sides and you get 2. So this guy here, I worked him out on the side, he's 2. So 150 times 2 times 0.14 is 42. And then we need our units. So remember, units come from the variables y and t. So y was the height of our balloon. What is our dimension for height here? Uh, so we're measuring in meters and radians per minute. So me meters for our height and times in minutes. Put those together and those would be your units. So as this balloon is going up at this particular moment in time where theta is pi over 4, we know that the rate of change of the angle is 0.14 radians per minute. We plug everything in and we find the corresponding rate of change for the height of the balloon. So at this particular moment in time, the balloon is traveling vertically at a rate of 42 meters per minute. There you go. So watch it again if you need to. Make sure you understand all the ins and outs. This application involved trigonometry, so make sure you watch out for that in your work. If you need to relate an angle to an outside dimension, you're probably talking about the trig. All right. Uh, make sure you watch all the videos, study hard, and I'll see you in the next one.